<laughs> now, don't take this the wrong way, but if you think the name Sarcastodon sounds like a sarcastic dinosaur your roommate made up, you're not entirely wrong. It does sound like the kind of creature that would roll its eyes while eating you. <laughs> But in reality, Sarcastodon wasn't here to joke. It was here to crush bones, tear flesh, and dominate the ancient world like a grizzly bear crossed with a meat grinder. This wasn't a dinosaur. It was a prehistoric mammalian predator, bigger than a polar bear, stronger than a lion, and meaner than your ex on laundry day. So yeah, the only thing sarcastic about Sarcastodon was the name. Everything else dead serious. Let's dive in. Sarcastodon's full name is Sarcastodon mongoliensis. That name might sound like sarcasm, but it actually means meat tooth from Mongolia. It was first described in 1938 by the American paleontologist Walter Granger, based on fossils found in the Erdin Manha Formation of Mongolia. Later, more remains were uncovered in what is now Inner Mongolia in China. These fossils weren't full skeletons, just skulls and jaws, but they were so massive, so uniquely shaped, that it was immediately clear this animal was a top-tier predator. And here's where it gets even more interesting. It wasn't part of the bear family or the cat family or even dogs. Sarcastodon belonged to a now-extinct family called Oxyenidae, part of a larger group known as Creodonts. Creodonts were the dominant land predators before modern carnivores took over. They roamed Earth for tens of millions of years, and Sarcastodon was one of the largest and most powerful among them. Let's break that down. Sarcastodon was part of the Oxyanidae family, which you can think of as one of nature's earlier drafts of land predators. Creodonts, including Oxyanids, looked a bit like today's carnivores, but were biologically different. They didn't evolve into today's lions, tigers, or bears. They were their own thing entirely. Sarcastodon was part of the Oxyanini subfamily, a group of carnivores that were short-legged, broad-headed, and specialized in powerful biting. In today's terms, if a lion is a sleek, agile hunter, Sarcastodon was more like a prehistoric bulldozer, slow, unstoppable, and designed to crush, not chase. So let's talk size. Sarcastodon was estimated to be around 3 meters long, that's roughly 10 feet, and it weighed somewhere between 500 and 800 kilograms. That's more than a modern polar bear. In fact, just its skull was nearly half a meter long. Imagine holding a human torso made of bone in your hands. That's the size we're talking about. It had a low, heavy body with short, strong limbs. Its feet were flat on the ground, like humans and bears, what scientists call plantigrade posture. That means it wasn't fast, it wasn't a sprinter, but it was stable and incredibly strong. The teeth are what really seal the deal. Sarcastodon had enormous canines for piercing flesh. Its premolars were shaped like blades, perfect for slicing meat. And its molars were designed for one brutal task, crushing bone. If a modern hyena can crack bones the size of a femur, Sarcastodon could likely pulverize it like popcorn. This was a bone-eating machine. Now, Sarcastodon wasn't just big. It was a hypercarnivore. That means its diet was almost entirely meat. No nuts, no berries, no scavenged veggies, just flesh, organs, and bones. And it didn't snack on rabbits, either. Its prey included some of the largest land animals of its time, creatures like brontotheres, which looked like giant rhinos with forked horns, chalicotheres, which were kind of like gorilla horse hybrids, and early rhinos. These were animals that could weigh several tons. Sarcastodon didn't chase them across open plains like a cheetah. It likely relied on stealth and brute strength, waiting in ambush or stalking slowly before launching a crushing attack. Its bone-crushing teeth also meant it could scavenge. It could crack into the remains of a dead megafauna carcass and reach the rich, fatty marrow inside, something only the strongest jaws could manage. This gave it an edge, even when prey was scarce. Sarcastodon lived during the mid to late Eocene, around 40 million years ago. Back then, Asia wasn't a vast desert. It was a warm, lush region with forests, rivers, and plenty of giant mammals. Sarcastodon wasn't alone in this world. 
It shared its environment with other large creodonts and some of the earliest members of modern carnivores. These up-and-coming predators were leaner, faster, and more adaptable. One of its potential rivals may have been Andrew Sarkis, a huge predator with a massive skull, although its lifestyle is still debated. Either way, Sarcastodon was near or at the top of its food chain. Until it wasn't. Tharkastodon's story is a lesson in evolution. For millions of years, creodonts were the kings of carnivory. They had size, power, and dominance. But then, the world changed. Climate cooled, forests turned into grasslands, prey animals evolved, and so did their predators. New carnivores, like the ancestors of cats, dogs, and bears, were more efficient, more versatile, and eventually took over. Sarcastodon, for all its size and strength, simply couldn't keep up. By the time the Oligocene rolled in, it was gone. Its entire family line, extinct. Surprisingly, for such a terrifying creature, Sarcastodon hasn't made many appearances in media. Why? 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 It's popped up in a few video games, like Jurassic World The Game, but is often misrepresented. Sometimes it's shown as a scavenger. Other times, it's painted as an omnivore. In reality, it was a specialized killer, a hyper-carnivore, through and through. Fan art sometimes adds saber teeth or dinosaur traits, but honestly, it doesn't need the embellishments. The real animal was already a prehistoric horror story. Despite all we know, Sarcastodon remains a mystery in many ways. All our knowledge comes from skulls and jaws. No leg bones, no ribs, no spine. That means everything about its movement, speed, and behavior is inferred. Scientists compare it to similar creodonts and build reconstructions based on skull shape, muscle attachment, and logical anatomy. One good fossil, one complete skeleton, could change everything. It could tell us if Sarcastodon was more bear-like or wolverine-like. It could reveal how it moved, how it hunted, and maybe even how it died. Sarcastodon likely vanished around 37 million years ago as the climate began to cool and ecosystems shifted. The giant prey it relied on became rarer, and the rise of more adaptable predators pushed creodonts out of their niche. But its legacy lives on. Sarcastodon is a symbol of what evolution can do when it pushes size, power, and specialization to the limit. It's the kind of creature that reminds us, no matter how dominant you are, the world keeps turning. So let's sum it up. Sarcastodon was not just a prehistoric carnivore. It was a 10-foot-long, bone-crushing apex predator from a completely extinct branch of mammals. It's what happens when evolution builds a monster for one job, eating giant meat. And yet, even the meat tooth monster wasn't immune to change. If you enjoyed this deep dive into forgotten prehistoric giants, hit that like button, subscribe, and drop a comment below. Let me know, who should we dig up next? Until next time, stay curious and maybe keep your bones to yourself.